Golly, that's good. I haven't found my first plant. <laughs> wow. That's different. I really like that. Peshods or Pechods or Pechaw! <laughs> yeah, now I'm gorgeous. Although probably fuzzier was better. Okay. So this is not what I expected. <laughs> Howdy, howdy, howdy. I am so discombobulated. Let's see, Kevin's with us. Hey, Kevin. Got a night off from uh, everything else that you do and get to join us live. Don't worry. September, we'll probably go back to Thursdays, just so you're aware. I am uh, discombobulated as always. <laughs> All right. Okay. High West. Uh, this one was one that I have, of course, not opened. Um Somebody was with me last week, a friend, and I was going to choose a different one, and goodness gracious, and he pulled this one off, said it looked like it sounded good. <laughs> this is what happens when you don't have any fingernails, so I, uh, and what I don't open it ahead of time, like, you know, normal, um, but anyhow, so he pulled this one off the shelf, and it's like, okay, what the heck, it's got to get opened eventually, right? So this is... The High West American Prairie Bourbon. This is a release that is not a normal everyday release for High West. It is a um, release that comes out every now and then. And this particular release is available only in Ohio. It was an OHLQ pick, a barrel pick from uh, the liquor establishment, public uh, private partnership in the state of Ohio uh, between. The whole, uh, government liquor sales and uh, economic development. So that's what this bottle is. So uh, this is one of those pseudo rare OHLQ, OHLQ releases that makes a $35 bottle into a $70 bottle. Uh, each release is slightly different. This one, uh, this year's, the 2022 release of this is 102.9 proof. This one, the 2021 release, is 99.2 proof. The 2022 is already pretty much gone from shelves all over the state of Ohio, although the database showed there might be one left in Cincinnati. High West Distillery is a Park City, Utah distillery. You may have heard of Park City, Utah, because that's where Sundance Film Festival is. So it makes sense that they did more to build up the town and the, and the tourism and things in Park City. Um, High West is best known for their namesake bourbon, as well as Midsummer's Night, or Midwinter Night's Dram. Uh, from what I understand, that's a sought-after bottle. I've never had it, never tried it. Nobody I know has it. <laughs> so if I ever get a chance to try it, I'll let you know what I think of it, and I'll, we'll do that with this bottle to do. Um, I was told this bottle needs to open. You see, I didn't do that. So we're going to come back in a month and try it again, and I am going to try it with the bourbon glass instead of at Glencairn. Somebody told me at, when you first open it that the neck pour is a little on the uh, harsh side. We'll find out. We're going to let it sit while we chat. Uh, let's see. High West is Utah's first legal distillery since 1870. For their American Prairie bourbon, they get their distillate from MGP in Indiana, as well as an undisclosed source elsewhere. Uh, which may be their own distillate. They are making stuff at High West now. Um, let's see. So the MGP mash bill, this is interesting because you've got two different mash bills that go into this, and this isn't something that happens a lot. Um, this has a mash bill. The MGP mash bill is 75% corn, 21% rye, 4% malted barley. That's a high, that's a high rye. 21% rye is a high rye. Uh, but 75% corn is in, the, is in the slouch. Gee, that's a high corn. It gets even better. From the undisclosed mash bill, 84% corn, 8% rye, and 8% malted barley. That second mash, again, it might be from High West Distillery. It might be from somebody else. 
Um, let's see. High West reports that there may be more to know about the this particular uh, bottle, but they can't say anything due to contractual obligations. So, I, I don't... That's something I don't care for. I don't like that. You know, if you're making something, I want to know what's in it. You know, I, there are some exceptions, but don't go out of your way to say, well, we can't tell you or we'd have to kill you. You know, at least Kentucky Al just doesn't say anything. These guys said, well, we can't tell you. I, I don't care. I don't like that. That makes me wonder if there's something shady going on. Um, let's see. High West was an innovator among the first to source a wide range of whiskeys from distilleries around the country, blending them together for a truly unique product. Now, a lot of brands are doing that now. We did Heaven's Door last week. They do that. They source their product and their distillers. So everything that they do is unique. High West is kind of doing the same thing. This bottle is not part of their... Rob is with us. Try a sip white right now. Okay, all right, okay. Sip right now. Oh, that nose is ethanol -y. <laughs> That nose is... I'm glad I did that on this and not a Glencairn. He says, see more. Uh, sip right now and see how much better it is after you let some of the uh, alcohol evaporate and smooth things out. Okay, all right. We'll do that. Uh, on the nose, I'm getting a dark caramel. Uh, toffee, maybe. Uh... I didn't read any tasting notes anywhere on this. I have no idea what anybody else says about it. As a matter of fact, it was hard to even research this bottle. It was tough. There wasn't a lot of information on it. It's like once OHLQ gets done with the release, chuck it. It's gone. So it was a little tough to find the information on this one. All right, Rob, here we go. Okay. Um, ooh, that's warm going all the way down. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Only 99 proof. It, its presence down the gullet is warmer than that, although on the palate it's about right. Um, on first sip, even with a lot of ethanol on it, I thought that was pretty nice. Uh, okay, good man. <laughs> Thanks, Rob. <laughs> all right. Uh, blah, blah, blah. Uh, this bottle isn't part of their normal uh, lineup. Said to act as a fundraiser for a conservation project called the American Prairie Reserve, which is a group uh, that's working to create the largest wildlife reserve in northeastern Montana. The pronghorn antelope on the label is a rendering by Diane Whitehead, and the animal itself is among the target animals the reserve wants to see spread out due to habitat reconstruction, along with bison and prairie dogs. Prairie dogs? Prairie dogs? Why? <laughs> Bison, I get it, but prairie dogs? Okay. Uh, this April 2021 OHLQ release of American High Prairie is a little different yet that at once it was ready for market, it was instead diverted into a peated barrel for an additional eight months. The spread on these finished products range from six months to two years. They offer quite a few finish types, including Madeira, rum, brandy, gin, and scotch, among others. And I'm guessing this one is from a peated scotch barrel, because it says it's from a peated whiskey barrel, so I'm guessing this is scotch. I did catch the peat. There's a little bit of a smoke in it. I love scotch, and I like a peated scotch, and we'll get to that. But I like that so far. Uh, this one is sourced from straight whiskey, so the originals were barreled for at least two years before getting, going into the finishing cask. Uh, hand numbered, this is number 19,779. That's the barrel on this one. Uh, Ken's watching. Hey, Ken. Welcome. This is actually one of eight barrels selected by the distiller and OHLQ exclusively for Ohio, not available outside the state. Uh, five barrels were uh, different American prairie expressions, including this peated, a Grenache. I didn't get that one. A Malbec. I didn't get that one. <laughs> A Portuguese, Portuguese brandy cask, and Olorosa sherry cask. I didn't get that one either. <laughs> this is a single barrel product. Single barrel selections are not blended, and therefore they retain their unique flavors, characteristics, and finish of the barrel in which they were aged. They also put out three different expressions of their double rye, which I know Kevin has one of those. Hey, Tom, how are you? 
I know Kevin has a double rye. Uh, they did two different Aquavit casks and a reused Manhattan. And the one that I picked up... I don't know. This is, this is the double rye. Uh, I'm not opening this one. <laughs> I don't know if this is the Aquavit or if this is the... This is a Syrah. I don't even have that listed. Unless the Syrah is Aquavit. Either that or not. <laughs> uh, so this is, this is um, from a Syrah barrel. I will be opening this at some point. I have something else I'm going to be doing next week. I promised Kevin I would do something else next week. So there you have it. Each barrel can produce anywhere between 275 and 400 bottles, depending on the length of aging and the type of the barrel. This one says on the side... Nothing. <laughs> Just peated whiskey. Oh, I almost spilled that. I got. I forgot the cork wasn't on it. That was funny. Okay. Uh, it's a recommended by the distillery to drink it neat. And again, I was warned last week to open it early and let it breathe, which I did not do. So we'll be coming back in a month and trying this again. And when we do that, that's when we'll do the double rye as well. Okay? Okay. All right. So let's get back into this. Now that it's set a little bit, we'll see. Heated, rather drink mellow. Your tastes are very, very specific. Mellow corn is not bad. And I do like a peated whiskey. I've got a scotch over here. If you've never had Laphroaig, that's like sucking on charcoal. That's, that's, that's licking a campfire. That's smoke all day long. The Laphroaig is... I got to try that at a, at a bar at a, at a movie screening. Uh, I helped on a movie, and they had the friends and, friends and crew and family and whatever else come up and watch the movie. And in the bar, they had Laphroaig. I had never had it before, but it was recommended. So I tried it, and I'm like, oh, me likey. <laughs> All right, so this is set for a couple minutes, Rob. Now, last night, a friend brought over Makers 101. And that changed characteristics very fast over time. Um, we haven't done that for the burb cast, but I'll do that at some point. Um, and I was surprised at how much it changed in just a little time. Now, we were outside, and it was getting kind of chilly, so the conditions, you know, were ripe, I guess you could say, for that one to change rapidly. I mean, the air was swirling and whatever else, whereas down here in the dungeon, there's no air swirling. None, unless I create it. <sighs> okay. <laughs> All right. And it did change a little bit. Uh, I'm not getting any peat on the nose. But I am getting ethanol. <laughs> getting a little citrus. That dark caramel toffee. Ethanol. Whew. Gonna burn my nose hairs out. Banana. That's interesting. I don't get. I know banana is is something that people point out often on the palate. I'm getting it on the nose. All right, uh, Aaron's watching. I missed it. What did you think when you opened it? <laughs> well, this is the peated barrel. I think you had the same thing, Aaron, and I, I scented it, I nosed it, and I tried it because Rob said try it. So I did. And I actually rather liked it. Now, you and I have different tastes as far as fresh opens go. You like them after they set a while, and I totally respect that. I have a tendency to enjoy them more. Although, a fresh pour right out of a newly opened bottle doesn't affect me. I don't mind what they call the neck pour. Um, now, there are some bourbons that are much more uh, changeable over time. The Oak and Eden was one of those. As nasty as that bottle was when I first opened it, and as nasty as it was as I continued to drink it, by the time I had let it sit about a month and a half, it was actually drinkable. And I used that opportunity to get rid of it. 
That was the bourbon and spire. And spire. Just don't. Just don't. All right. So, maybe a little candy corn. Don't let that dissuade you if you don't like candy corn. I happen to like candy corn. If you don't like it, there's something wrong with you. But this is bourbon, so. I like candy corn. I like those little sugary peanut things, too, the candy peanuts. I don't like marshmallows, though. But I like those peanuts. <laughs> okay. All right. Oh. That's the worst I've ever had when I opened it. And I understand that. Um, being a peated barrel, uh, you know, unless you are enamored with scotch as I am, that's going to come out. It's going to hit you in the face. All right. That's what you got, Aaron, is that peated barrel. To me, that's delicious. I like it. My favorite scotch is Johnny Walker Blue. The next one is Johnny Walker Double Black because it's a poor man's blue. But I've had the Balvenie, uh, the Double Wood, and I've had the Caribbean cask, which is in rum casks. It's delicious. The Laphroaig. Um, my, my experience with scotches are not as much as bourbons, obviously. Um, but uh, I, those are the ones that I've tried, and I've liked them. And for me, the Johnny Walker Blue and the Johnny Walker Double Black have got a really nice peat to it. Laphroaig is peat out the wind at the yin-yang. It's everywhere. It's all over it. It's like, yeah, I like that sucker on fire, and let me sniff it and eat it. And so I do like this, and that peated barrel is coming through loud and clear. I will... I, uh, I will tell you that if you liked it better a month from after you opened it, I worry because I like that peated barrel taste that I'm getting and I'm wondering if it's going to go away after a month. I don't want it to. I like it. So, all right. Peat, uh, if you're unaware of what peat is, peat is, uh, it's, like a, it's like a moss. Um, it's grown on purpose. It's also found in the wild in Scotland, all over the place, but it's also grown on purpose. Uh, it sometimes is called peat moss. Uh, it's used in gardening quite often to change the balance of the soil that you're planting in, like for gardens and so on. There's a legend in my family about one of the family members walking barefoot through the peat moss and getting in trouble because they got dirty. It's, it's like a long time ago. I barely remember that. Anyway, um, uh, and I don't even remember the kid's name. I used to, Nathan, I think it was Nathan, family member. Anyhow, um, so what they do is they harvest this peat, this peat moss. And as they're doing their barrel process, they burn that peat. And it smokes wildly. So the flavor that goes into scotch and into scotch barrels, in those peated barrels, is that burning peat. I'm not aware of that practice happening in the USA. It might, but my guess is these are these are barrels that they got from Scotland, which is perfectly fine. Scotch is often they they put it in a peated barrel or burn peat with it or something like that. You have to watch it. There's a there's a there's a documentary on Hulu called Scotch. It's very good, and I'll have to watch it again because I'm I'm not remembering some of it. But um, they get that peat involved and then they will use an American bourbon barrel to finish out some of their scotches. So the trade-off is worth it, especially for me. I like this one. Give it three to four weeks, and it's amazing. Way different. Okay. That, again, scares me, because I like it as it is, right out of the bottle right now. I like that peated scent to it. I'm going to see if I can get you something else. We know that it's got smoke. We know it's got that peated scent, so let's, let's go uh, further in. There are definitely some bright spots. I'm getting a really bright note. Um, 
the legs are nothing but peat. Smoky. On the palate, though, I had some things, and they went away really quick in favor of that of the uh, finish. Let's go back to it again, because whatever it was, I want to say it was vanilla that popped out, but I could be wrong. Give me just a moment, okay? <laughs> I think this is one of those bottles I'm not going to drink real fast. Um, I think this is going to be one of those special occasion bottles. I like the flavor of this. All right. Yeah, there's a sweetness that comes to the front. Um, it might be vanilla. It might be something else, maybe butterscotch. It's very minute. It'll probably express itself better in a few weeks, as, as Aaron is implying. Um, uh, there is a sweetness to it, right in the center of my tongue. Um, and again, once you get into the finish, it's nothing but that smoke, that peated barrel, which I like. All right, I need a little more of this because I'm just trying to find that those other elements. And it's not like the peated barrel on the palate, the peated barrel... <laughs> Isn't necessarily drowning anything out, but you got to hold it there for a while, and you got to and you got to let it express itself, and that's not hard to do. It's just hard to find those flavors. It's hard to find. Now maybe it'll open up underwater. We'll do that here in a minute. I'll take another dram or two of this, and and we'll see. All right. Now this is right out of the bottle again. I didn't give this any time to breathe. So I'll try to aerate it just a little bit. All right. It's vanilla. And vanilla bean. That's what it is. It's vanilla bean. Because it's different than vanilla. If you've ever tasted vanilla, it's not particularly sweet to me. Vanilla bean, though, that's delicious. And I think that that's what I'm getting out of this is vanilla bean. Um, really quite good. Uh, and again, I'm going to let it sit, and then we're going to come back to it in about a month, along with the other uh, High West that I have here. It's water time. <laughs> I don't know where I get it. I don't know where I don't know where it comes from. I'm sorry. I'm not sorry. I'm not sorry one bit. All right. Wait till you see what we're doing next week. Oh my goodness. Wait. Just wait. Just wait. You have to wait. Okay, so with a little water, let's see what happens. Brings out a little honey on the nose. Again, after you've added stuff, the nose tends to just dive. But there are some notes, and it's fun to try. Now, also know that once you've had a few sips of it neat, it's going to influence your nose even on water at that point. Uh, you know, your taste and your smell are so connected. They, you know, I remember in school they would tell us to plug our nose and and taste something. You know, you know, you'd take, you'd plug your nose if you didn't like the flavor of something, right? Just to get it down. All right. Citrus came out a little more. First thing I noticed right away was a difference in the mouthfeel. And that happens frequently when you add a little water to it. And this is just reverse osmosis water. There's nothing special about it. It's not limestone water or anything like that. Uh, it's filtered water. It's not even reverse osmosis. It's filtered water. And it made the mouthfeel a little more silky, a little more smooth, which is nice. Um... 
it brought down the flavor profile a lot. It's like everything is still there, but just muted. I'm going to try it again. That was my first impression. It improved the mouthfeel, and that's all. It's better neat. It just takes, I mean, it just falls apart on water. It just falls apart. That's a shame. I mean, even that wonderful peat. I mean, it's still there in the legs, um, in the finish, but it just it falls apart. People are talking. I need out of that basement. <laughs> you should do a bourbon night on the porch. Everyone brings a bourbon. We pass it around the fire. I could do that. I need to put a little bit of money into my internet first. The Wi-Fi is not reaching out there at all anymore. And the last time I did it, the feed was so terrible that I almost couldn't use it. That was the George Dickel. And I ended up going with a bunch of, for the YouTube video, I, I went with a bunch of still frames. And that's not how I want to do this. It just was awful. And, you know, I spent a butt ton of money on this mesh system in the house, this Wi-Fi mesh system. And it's supposed to extend Wi-Fi everywhere. But the problem is that I upgraded my Wi-Fi, my internet, and I can't get the mesh to recognize anything over a certain megabits per second. So it's not strong enough to reach outside. When I get that fixed, I'll do that. That's why we haven't been outside. It's really nice out tonight, a little humid. I was taking this photo, and it's funny because I just took this today, and I, I went to a, um, a place where they have high prairie grasses, and it's gorgeous. It's a beautiful prairie, and I went there to take pictures, but the grass was so stinking high. Even the cut grass was halfway up the label of the bottle. So there's another place that I found that has, uh, it's not, I don't know if it's, I guess it's kind of prairie-ish if you're going out west, Montana-ish. It kind of looks prairie-ish. So I took that photo and uh, got it, that finished, and that's going to be the representative photo for this particular dram. So, yeah. Yeah, it's all about the photo photography as well as everything else. Okay, one more, and then we're going to try it over ice. I do not have high hopes over ice. I'm going to do it because that's just what I do most of the time. I don't have high hopes. The peat is um, significantly lowered on that last one with a little water in it. The peat's what made it special, I think. Kevin doesn't feel that way. Kevin gave me a puke emoji. <laughs> He's finally able to watch after a few weeks and I do something peated that he doesn't like. <laughs> Mellow Corn needs to come out with a 10-year, you know? <laughs> Don't you agree, Kevin? Wouldn't you love to have a 10-year Mellow Corn? <laughs> he doesn't like Mellow Corn. I thought it was fine. All right. We don't need Wi-Fi for that. Oh, you're just talking about having people come over, pass it around, and not film it? What? What kind of idea is that? <laughs> All right, one more. John's watching. Hey, John. This is John's suggestion. John, I don't think you would have liked this one. Well, you might have. John is a barbecue provocateur. The man can smoke meat. I'm telling you what. Legendary smoked meat. Legendary. Very good smoked meat. Some of the best I've ever had. He might like this. You might not. You like that Maker's Last Night. This has got a high rye mash bill for 50% of the mash. But the rye is hidden by the flavors of the peated barrel. I need to put more in there. What am I doing? What am I doing? Okay. This is, I will confess, a recycled ice sphere. I need to make more ice spheres. 
All right. Um... <laughs> with Mountain Dewey wood. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> That's true. With Mountain Dewey, he'd love it. I wonder what this would taste like with Mountain I'm not going to do it because Mountain Dew is vile. To me, he loves it. That's great. I wonder what that peated taste would do with Mountain Dew. Uh, uh, <laughs> Root beer, maybe. Uh, no, no, it just no. Stop it. <laughs> All right, I'm in. Kevin, you're in. All right. Well, Kevin, when we do it, you can come down. I'll make sure that you're invited. We're gonna invite a lot of people that come to this Burbcast virtually. Uh, I think it'll be fun. I think we, we'll do it sometime in September when things calm down for me. Um, just in time for the ice pour. Yes, Michael, you are. This is the High West uh, American Prairie Bourbon. This is the peated barrel. And I do like scotch, so this peated barrel to me is delish. I like it. Uh, Aaron is telling me that it'll mellow out in a few weeks, and I'm worried. Uh, because I like the peat, and I don't want the peat to go away. And the peat almost went away on water, so I'm not feeling very optimistic about it over the ice sphere. So we'll see. Should I just call it an ice ball? It sounds vulgar. It is a sphere. A magnificent, elegant ice sphere. Ice ball just doesn't sound as good. Kevin, you got a good or uh, Aaron's got a good one to bring, so... so uh... Kevin can try it. All right. This might be fun. <laughs> I don't know how I can do it and not film it, though. I, okay. 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 We've definitely got some bottles we can share. I know Kevin's got an arsenal he can share. I do, too. <laughs> Let's cool this down. John says, like my butts rubbed and my pork pulled. I just said that on camera. I know he's talking about his smoked meat. That doesn't make it any better. <laughs> just going to stop while I'm behind. <laughs> he really does make a great pork butt. I mean, seriously. I make a good pork butt. No, pork tenderloin. His pork butt kills my tenderloin. Ah, uh, I was looking at the phone and I spilled. Thanks, John. Turn the camera around. Okay. There's some cigar characteristics on ice. Um, as long as you don't dilute it too much, don't let it dilute, just cool it down and don't let it dilute. The peat stays there. Um, some orange peel is there. Definitely some tobacco notes that weren't there before. That's not bad. <laughs> John was over last night. He likes his stuff on ice. Uh, you know, by the time he let me try his Maker's 101 that had ice in it, it was like so watered down that there wasn't, I even, I even told him, I said, there's nothing left in here. But uh, this, being cold and still undiluted-ish, is actually pretty good. That works. The peat is still there nicely. Uh, again, some orange peel. Um, cigar, tobacco. Again, when you think about those flavors in bourbon, they may sound unpalatable. Tobacco? In my bourbon? Ew! It's a compliment. If, if, you're, if you're saying that there's some leather notes in it, cigar... It's, it's tough to explain until you experience it for yourself. The tobacco notes are not 
a bad thing. The, the cigar notes are not a bad thing. Leather notes, which aren't in this, but leather notes are not a bad thing. Um, it's just a characteristic of the bourbon. Again, they don't add flavors in there. They're, you're not getting added sugars, added leather. <laughs> they don't soak it in a leather cast. You're not getting that. That's not the case. It's just the distillate and the barrel that it sits in. That's it. The mash bill creates the, the mash. The mash is turned into the distillate. The distillate goes into the cask, and then it comes out. And sometimes it goes into a secondary cask, fine, uh, like this one did. Eight months in a peated barrel, and that made a big difference. Eight months made a big difference. Uh, but it's not that they add any flavor to it. The, it's, it's the whiskey and the barrel, and that's it. And what you get is a note, the typical ones, vanilla, cinnamon, pepper, caramel, those are endemic to almost every bourbon. What is exciting nowadays is when you get a taste. Yes, it's exciting when you taste one that's traditional, but it's really good. But it's also exciting when you taste one and you get different notes out of it, like tobacco or leather or, or Red Hots. You know, we tried that Maker's 101 last night. We got Red Hots out of it. There's definitely a cinnamon component, but it was sweet. So we said Red Hots, that Red Hot candy. And that wouldn't be the first time that I've encountered that. So um, don't let the tobacco or the cigar notes chase you away, ladies, because um, it actually has a really nice, earthy finish. I call it cigar. I call it tobacco. Somebody else may call it something else. But that's what I'm getting out of it, and I really like it. It's, it's good over ice. I like it over ice better than over water. Meat's still best, but ice is pretty good, surprisingly. It was diluted a little bit more. I got some more toffee out of that one. Very nice, really. Ah, yeah, okay. I like this. So uh, I can give you an endorsement, I suppose, for the High West uh, American Prairie Bourbon. I like this one. Uh, it, again, if you don't like the peated, it comes in, came in. <laughs> different casks, uh, wine cask, cherry, different things. So if you don't like peated, don't get the peated. Get something else. Do your research and find out what's out there and get the one that you think you might like or get two or three of them and compare them. That's fun. Um, next week, Kevin had told me tonight that he was going to do a bottle and I said, oh, I might do that next week. And I committed. I'm committing. So next week, let me get this out of the way. We're going to do bookers. I have not done any bookers. I've got three different bookers. This one, I think, is a duplicate. They tell you on the inside what they are. This is Granny's Batch. I think I've got two Granny's Batches. This is a January 2020 release. I've not tried Booker's on the Burbcast before. I've had Booker's before. Hi, Quinn. How are you, sir? Met you uh, last week. It was uh, good to meet you face-to-face. -face. Uh, let's see if I'm missing anything else. Need to find rocks. You need to get whiskey spheres. You need to get ice spheres. I'll send you a link to where you can get a nice, inexpensive mold for ice spheres. It's I've, I've got one that does two, and it was not very expensive. And I've got one that does, what is it, seven? That one was expensive. <laughs> but still not terrible. It wasn't awful. The, but the two-sphere is all you're going to need. You can make them as often as you want. Uh, and I'll, I will send you a link for that one. Um, okay. Uh, let's see. The cubes are talking about the cut stein-like things I have. What? Are the cubes you're talking about the cut stein-like things I have? They are awesome. I don't know what that means. <laughs> so, tastes like dirt. Okay. <laughs> All right. So, Booker's, I've had it before. My expression, or my impression of Booker's, I had it when I was in uh, South Carolina uh, in 2020. And I had it one other time. And it's, for me, spicy. It's very peppery. Um, and, of course, every batch is going to be a little bit different. And we're only going to do the one. But Booker's does have a tendency to be a hotter, spicier pour. So this will be next week. I haven't done Booker's before. It's going to be fun. 
I think it's going to rile some people up, which will be fun as well. Uh, so in the meantime, somebody's talking. Not a fan either, but KC might. Uh, you know, I'm back and forth on it. Uh, maybe I'll like this one. Again, the one I had in North Carolina was very spicy. I had one, and then I switched to something else. Because they had Eagle Rare and Blanton's and all that stuff coming out their armpits. <laughs> that sounds really unappetizing. But anyway, they had it everywhere. So I was buying Eagle Rare and, and uh, Buffalo Trace and things like that for myself and for my crew that went to the screening with me in South Carolina. So it was fun. Um, anyway, so Booker's is next week. Uh, and uh, I really appreciate you coming and along for the journey. It's going to be fun to continue to do this. This was, I think, number 114. Either 114 or 115. So we're creeping up there. We're going to keep going. We're going to go until I've run out of bourbon, and I will not run out of bourbon. I've got some coming that a friend of mine couriered personally back to Ohio. <laughs> not going to say anything else. That's all I'm going to say. Very excited to try those with you right here. All right. We will see you next Wednesday. Again, Wednesdays for the next few weeks until I think September 15th, something like that. Uh, and then we'll come back and we'll go back to Thursdays uh, just because it's more convenient. No, the whiskey rocks. I, so you like the bookers, Kevin? Am I getting that right? You like the bookers? I don't know. I see that my feed is being stupid. So it may just, I don't know what it is. I've, I've rebooted my internet. I rebooted my computer. I, did, I don't know what else it is. So uh, anyway, okay, so that's it. Uh, we've been going for uh, 42 minutes. It's time to wrap up. Thank you for watching. Thanks for checking us out here and following. Uh, you can subscribe to us on YouTube where I do film these on the camera now. So if we get a bad feed, I've got a great feed going into the camera. So I'll put that one on YouTube. Uh, uh, Instagram at Beautiful Bourbon and of course BeautifulBourbon.com where we have the blog which I'm behind on <laughs> but you already knew that so we will see you next week want to make sure I'm not missing anything Booker's is good you like the Booker's all right okay oh okay I have something I think is like what you're talking about put them in the freezer they are like granite cube shaped rocks yeah that would work as long as, well, it works if you're getting clear ice out of it. If you're getting dirty ice that you can't see through-ish, then you need something that'll do directional freezing. And this other thing that I have, and I can send, send you a link to, I think you'll be happier with that. So anyway, as I was doing my wrap up, <laughs> you guys take care, uh, drink safely, be careful. Uh, if you're doing what I'm doing, do it at home. Or have a DD. All right? So, guys, uh, thank you so much, and we will see you next week. We're doing Booker's next week, and it's going to be lit. Take care.